I'm not even sure what day it is now, to be honest. Uh, Monday, it must be Monday because I was due to go home today, but it looks like I'll be staying a little bit longer, which is great news. So I've taken the opportunity to come back to a fantastic area of Atlantic rainforest, which Ben Porter introduced me to a couple of days ago. Uh, it's been raining, so everything's looking very lush and vibrant, which is good news. Um, I've come a little bit further into the wood and I spotted something up through the gap in the trees and we've got this bouldery plateau which is brilliant. I absolutely love it. It's got a fantastic feel to it. We've got this grassy area here where Mel Meg's currently chilling out and it's just surrounded by these wonderful old oak trees. Quite a special feel to it and I think because the light's just been sucked down into the space as well is really adding to the images that I'm making. Very much drawn to this cluster of oak trees here. Brilliant character, lots of other features surrounding it as well. I must have made four or five different compositions from these trees alone. So I'll definitely be showing more than one, I think. But the one that I want to talk about, I think looks really good. You know, there's no, no mist, no fog, but the rain is giving just what we need. And with some careful, careful positioning, we are getting some depth and atmosphere as well. So we've got almost like five trunks coming up from this one spot here. But the foundation is made up of fronds of bracken. There's a rowan sapling. There's fresh oak saplings coming up. So the regeneration is really good. Um, getting some nice separation between these trunks here. Uh, we've got that lovely indicator species of the polypody ferns there. Some real good low canopy oak leaves. Down in the distance, just through the gap of this beautifully gnarled character on the left-hand side, is a rowan tree, adding that little bit of depth and darkness back there, contrasting with the lightness here. Darkness of a rain-sodden birch tree would just bring in a little bit of the trunk of that on the right-hand side to help with the framing. Uh, not too much of the canopy, because on this instance, I don't want to bring in the sky. I actually want to bring more of the woodland floor because of its variety, its texture, but also the contrasting color. Because of these mossy boulders, which are just wonderful, there's warm colour coming through there. A bit of yellow, almost a bit of orange, which is doing wonders to break up some of the darker greens in the scene. But all in all, because it's wet, I think this works really well. Vertical shot, 4x5, but like I say, I'll show some of the, uh, maybe one or two other compositions as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to work this space a little bit more. Ooh, a little bit of little cloud coming in over there. Fingers crossed, it might, it might pass through. Um, but yeah, see, I haven't got a lot of time, but we'll, we'll see what it brings. I think I'll just concentrate in this uh, really nice space here. Ooh, actually, just as I finish there, that low cloud that I spotted has just come through ever so thinly, ever so thinly. But if I look, it's definitely made a difference. Just that touch of softening. It doesn't have to be much, just a tiny, tiny bit really helps to elevate the image. Brilliant, great. <laughs> I usually miss those opportunities that are very transient, but yeah, that, that worked out well. Happy with that. I love working spaces like this where you feel as if you've found a, a hot spot in the location, almost like the epicenter of a woodland. So I've literally moved the tripod, what, two foot, turned the camera about 60 degrees, and we have another scene that's worth photographing. We've got a foreground oak tree here, some deadfall, which is offering some dynamic shape and some framing components, some low level leaves, and then just where the canopy opens up is exactly where I want it to, so we can see the structure of the branches offering more of a frame at the top. Boulders at the bottom, giving an interesting foundation. 
another boulder further in surrounded by hazel and in the background we've got another oak tree, a boulder at the bottom of there so there's a sense of repetition as well. And I don't think I'm going to be as fortunate as this one and get low cloud pass through, it's definitely lifted now, the sun's trying its best to shine through. Um, and even though there's no directional light there's still a feeling of light, we've had plenty of rain so all these wet surfaces are reflecting any light that's there and just giving a little bit of a shimmering effect to the leaves and that makes a huge huge difference compared to when it's dry. I'm not using a polarizer, I don't want to cut through that because I potentially can make things look a little bit flatter. I like to see the structure of the leaves. Uh, and just a nicely contained image. We've even got uh, a hazel through that gap there as well. And hints of orange coming through, just like the last one. It just offers a little bit of color contrast. I always like to walk into scenes I've just photographed to see what might lie beyond. I guess that's the objective of a lot of images actually, is to encourage the viewer to want to go into the image and see what lies beyond. And there's definitely some things that have piqued my interest there, so I don't know if there is anything to photograph, but definitely worthwhile going there. There's a lot of evidence of the grazing cattle having been, been up here, which is probably why it makes it a lot easier to navigate. So I'll probably just see where they've been <laughs> because they might, be, they might lead me to something interesting. Yeah, right. Let's get this tripod packed over. have to take a quick photograph of these writhing characters. I don't think we necessarily associate Hawthorne with Atlantic Rainforest, but here they are. And the one further back has a lovely covering of polypody ferns as well. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, the only reason why I can tell is they're Hawthorne is that right on the periphery we can see the leaves and some berries starting to form. But yeah, I mean, just look at them. But this, this one closer to us is a little bit under the shade of this huge oak tree. And then one further back, which is reaching out and just soaking up the light through that opening in the canopy. Really quite beautiful. There's a really nice frame actually, because we've got the warmth coming through on the moss, but then surrounding all of this is the darker green of the thorny scrub in the understory. And then further back, we've got the dark leaves of the sycamore. Um, and then sandwiched between those is this strip of boulders, vegetation, ferns, offering an interesting backdrop. And I guess in some ways helping us to, you know, draw the eye down towards the, the center and the, the distant hoth on there. Not only am I in a dream world of moss, but I finally get to photograph two species of trees, which I've always loved, but I've never seemed to have found a good composition of when shooting locally. And that's Hawthorne on the left and Crabapple on the right. 
Now the Hawthorne is taking up most of the frame here because it's, well, it's got the most complexity, it's the most dominant feature in the frame here. All those beautiful branches absolutely smothered in moss. Uh, some polypody ferns as well, which is nice. Now you can tell it's a crab apple on the right because there are some apples, but we'll only get a tiny hint of those right on the end of the reaching branch. And then right down through the gap is a nice little water feature where Meg is currently splashing away, having great fun. <laughs> and it's a yeah, four by three landscape and it is just really about that moss, that vegetation. Yes, I get to photograph two great species of trees, but you can't necessarily tell what they are, to be honest, because some of the kind of, some of the best features of Hawthorne is the blossom in the spring, which obviously we're not getting now. And I don't think this is going to show many berries anyway, perhaps higher up, which will be completely out of frame. So yeah, it's about the, the mass of green, it's wet, we've got the rich vegetation, it's given that rainforest feel. Two fantastic species. Meg's in the middle now. I should probably take another photograph while she's there. But yeah, really nice. It's just light, the rain's just stopping, the light's just lifting, so I'll, I'll take a couple more frames. That was the final episode from my recent trip and although a very brief outing, I felt it was productive, always valuable and certainly enjoyable. But what wasn't on the agenda was having to go back to the same area the following day, but I accidentally left a pouch of batteries next to one of those lovely mossy hawthorn trees. But thankfully, I found the pouch quite quickly and it gave me about an hour to spare just to have another quick wander, which is when I made that final image of the lovely rowan tree and it's a dormant of late summer berries. Uh, an image that I'm quite fond of actually, I might print it. But that intimate approach certainly worked well with the dry cloudy conditions, just concentrating on colour, form and balance. So that was the second trip that I've had to our temperate rainforest. If you'd like to see me make more trips, do some photography and filming, then please consider supporting my work. Just head to my website where you can find books, prints, affiliate links, and links to my Patreon, etc. But thank you very much for watching this episode, and I'll see you again soon.